Good morning, everyone. My name is Brittany. If you don't know who I am, I am a physician assistant who specializes in infectious disease. And today's video is going to be a follow me around or what's my day like as a provider who works from home. So I feel like a lot of people don't understand how a provider can work from home, especially because our job is a lot of patient care. It's, a, it's about seeing patients and being there in person to diagnose and treat them. But um, specifically for my job, it's hybrid. So there's some days where I work in office and then some days when I'm at home. And today it's just one of the days that I'm at home. And I thought it would be kind of cool to show you guys what I do on a daily basis when I'm not in the office. This morning I woke up and I had breakfast. I had avocado toast. It just varies based on what I'm feeling for that day. But then if I have time before my shift starts, then I will just like watch TV and chill for a little bit before I head on to jump onto my computer. And so now I'm on my computer. I have my whole like desktop and uh, double monitor going. Um, the reason why I use double monitor is because I just have to look at a lot of tabs. It's easier for me to look at everything when I have multiple screens. So I just changed my screen so that I'm protecting my patient's information. But essentially my double screen is just this Dell monitor and then my initial screen is just my laptop and so i'll hook this up via this i really don't know what this is called but um you can get this on amazon that's where i got it and you can have a double monitor and everything just fits really really nice on my desk this morning i also you know i checked my emails the first thing that i do when i get onto the computer um or my messages from the emr and then when I don't have things to do, I will catch up on labs for my patients as well as prepare for the next day. So tomorrow I'm seeing quite a lot of patients. And what I do is I'm going to actually blur all this out because it has information on it. But I bring a piece of paper with me into the room and it just has basic information for my patients like why they're coming in and what i need to do for them and it's readily available when i'm talking to them so this is always right next to me while i'm there and my first patient tomorrow is a pregnant female who um came back from vacation and was having systemic symptoms of fevers chills malaise and all of that and so we did some lab work on her to figure out was it like malaria dengue which is something that is i'm hearing about a lot so that's why we're doing that and also we're checking like zika because if you guys remember from a couple years ago there was like the zika endemic or there was like a zika issue where a lot of people were getting bitten by mosquitoes infected with zika it can cause a lot of issues for patients that are pregnant because it can be detrimental to the baby so Specifically for this patient, I'm just checking on the labs and one of the things that came back positive or her IgM, which is her antibodies, is positive for chikungunya, which is something I've never heard of. So we are going to Google that together. Chikungunya virus is spread to people by the bite of an infected mosquito. Um, symptoms can include fever, joint pain, headache, muscle pain, joint swelling, and rash. There's no medicines to treat it and vaccination is recommended for some travelers. I'm assuming that it's a it's a virus that's self-limiting because there's no treatment for it. But I wonder if I need to do anything specifically for patients that are pregnant. So my best friend is to always go to up to date because they will tell you how to treat patients for different specific reasons whether you're a child adult etc and so um we're going to look up that um so yeah basically it causes acute febrile polyarthritis and inflammatory arthritis so it probably just feels like her bones hurt all the time the name chikungunya is derived from an african language and means that which bends up or stooped walk because of the incapacitating joint involvement that may complicate the disease so treatment is influenced by phase and duration of the illness and response to therapy it's typically treated symptomatically and if needed with supportive measures so it's 
it's just whatever she needs so specifically <laughs> this is like i'm literally teaching a class right now but specifically for pregnant women pregnant women infected with ch chikungunya virus are not at increased risk for atypical or severe disease um maternal fetal transmission of chikungunya virus has been described and maternal chikungunya virus um has been associated with miscarriage the risk of maternal fetal transmission is highest when pregnant women are symptomatic during the interpartum period um two days before delivery to two days after delivery during this period vertical transmission occurs in approximately half of cases okay so she's nowhere near close to giving birth so i'm not worried about maternal fetal transmission but it is described to have an association with miscarriage and so she's probably going to have to follow up with her OBGYN, which i'm assuming she is because she also has to go back to do blood work her ob yeah she has an appointment okay so that is what i've learned about chikungunya today also i just need to check her zika titers and and parvovirus b19 which is also known as fitz disease okay that is it for now what i do is i go through all my patients i do the same thing if i don't know what i'm looking at i will google um up to date and also i will ask my doctor if i have any questions about treatments so all right so sometimes if i'm feeling super ambitious i will go to the gym on the days that i am working from home just because it's closer to my house and things like that but i'll go during my lunch break so i try to go in for a really quick session so that i am back at the computer if i need to do anything but also i can work from my phone if there's anything that's super important that needs to be addressed right away um, so right now I'm just putting on some sunscreen. The one that I'm using right now is called Skin 1004 and it's a Korean brand. It's pretty nice. I don't love it as much as other ones that I've used, but I'll have to use that one and then move on to another one. And then sometimes I'll come in with this Dr. Jart Sycopair Tiger Grass um color correcting treatment just because i do have spots and essentially what this is it's like a green cream and when you rub it in it turns into skin color and it basically is supposed to hide the redness and things so i don't know if it actually works but i like to use it just because it makes me feel like i have some sort of like color coverage even though i'm not using makeup um it's actually supposed to be really like calming because it has sick pair in it so that's why i use it um and then after i rub that in i will come in with some sort of lip balm just so that my lips are not chapped um i have this summer fridays lip butter balm in the color poppy it's very pretty so if you guys like a pop of color um no pun intended this is a good lip balm to try all right now i'm gonna pack my gym bag we're gonna head over to the gym and um then i'll come back and have lunch like actually eat lunch but then i'll eat lunch while i'm working hi everyone i just got out of the shower so my hair is sopping wet but i'm gonna make lunch and then go back to work so my lunch is just like a couple of leftovers from yesterday's dinner but i'm also going to make a smoothie Okay, so I'm also heating up some leftovers, but I know I spoke to you guys about the element. So the other day I tried the watermelon salt flavor, which I actually really liked. My only thing is it's really concentrated. And I know it says on the packet to put it in 16 to 30, 32 ounces of water. I think I did like 24 and it was still pretty concentrated for one packet. So I have a 16 ounce water bottle here. I'm going to put half of this element packet and see if I like that taste better because it was just too much for like a small portion. Today's flavor that I'm trying is raspberry salt. I wish I had like the giant smart water bottles because those are obviously bigger. See, I feel like half for a 16 ounce water bottle is good enough. So I could probably get another use out of this packet. Um, so we'll save that for another day. Okay, everyone, I'm here for an update. So I finished doing my paper. So like I wrote out everything that I'll be seeing the patients for. 
and then i also have the fan on so it's might be windy when or you might hear the fan blowing when i'm filming this another big part of my day is i get a lot of messages from people that are inpatient and um, these providers are asking for fall appointments for these patients and so i have to go through their chart to make sure that we are the right people that they're supposed to be following up with and i just got a message usually what i do is i will look at the previous id note because someone from our service has usually seen this person in the hospital already um, and I'll read their note and I'll see what's going on in terms of their infections and things like that. And then I'll decide like when they need to be seen, whether it's next week, two weeks from now, any further than that. Um, if they're leaving the hospital with a PICC line or some sort of IV in them, then I also need to make sure I'm following their labs. So a lot of it is like behind the scenes work and then I have a excel sheet with all this information so that i am organized and i know when things need to be done knowing when the patient needs to follow up with me it's pretty much based on when they leave the hospital and when they finish their antibiotics or whatever medication they're on so it depends um and with time that's how i like kind of decide that this person needs to be seen when um so i'm just gonna go through their note and decide when I can see them. That's going to mark the end of today's video. Also the end of my workday. So it's five. Um, and I'm going to go downstairs and watch the rest of whatever is on the Olympics channel. I think it might be beach volleyball right now. But um, I'll just vlog for the moment while I pack my bag for tomorrow. I'm also just watching this video while I finish up my day so um here is what i'm packing i've actually changed my bag so now i'm using my long chomp um and in here i'm going to put my papers for tomorrow i also need to put my keys in here and my wallet where's my wallet okay i've got my wallet so this is also going in here um, I need my work phone, so I'm going to put my phone in here, and then I think that's pretty much it, because I just, I keep everything that I use for work in here, I never really take it out, I just need to put my water bottle, but I'll refill this tomorrow in the morning, and then also my lunch, so that is going to be the end of today's vlog. It might not be the longest vlog, but I think it's pretty insightful as to what someone who works in the medical field does for a work from day at home so if you guys are curious about that that's essentially what i do and um now i'm preparing for tomorrow which is the day that i'll be in clinic so maybe i will do another video i don't know yet but i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did give it a thumbs up and i'll see you guys in my next one bye